Who is listening for the new possibilities? Who's looking at the frontier of what is newly possible? I'm always trying to think of the next thing. I don't usually want to build anything twice. I always am interested in something that opens up new possibilities. In this episode of Sound Builders, we travel to downtown Brooklyn to meet Andy Cavatorta. We heard that he was applying magnetic resonance to a piano harp in order to expand our traditional instruments vocabulary by unlocking new sounds. My name is Andy Cavatorta. Sometimes I say that I design new types of musical instruments and sometimes I say I'm a sculptor who works with machines and sound. For years I would pick up different instruments and I would write different pieces with them. And every time I picked up a new instrument I would write something that was pretty different from anything I'd ever written before. It got me thinking about sort of the importance of, of new directions and how inspiring it is when suddenly everything is shifted and you have to listen anew. Later on I started building robots. By the time you have a few robots a lot of my friends thought that the, the obvious thing to do is to make them fight each other. But I thought the thing to do was to make them start to play music together because I was really enjoying the way they sounded. All the motors and all the like specific whines and whirs and little percussive sounds that they made. Around that time I met Bjork. She commissioned me to design a whole bunch of new instruments, just prototypes and experiments for her biophilia project. That of course became this like big success. She has the gravity harps, they're on the record. I, I went on the tour which was wonderful. After that, I discovered there's lots of people who are interested in this stuff. Do you have a philosophy behind your creative process? It all starts with thoughts about how it feels. How does the sound of it feel? How does the music that it can make feel? And if it's visual and it has motions, how does that feel? It becomes a giant Rubik's Cube and I love this process of spending weeks turning it around and turning it around and turning it around and there's a lot of mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, lots of software. I love that part. And then the next part where you have to build it, that's difficult and it's expensive uh, and it requires lots of late hours. I like it a lot better now that I'm pretty good at it, but for a long time it, 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 that part felt like torture. So what, what is this thing? <laughs> This one behind us is an instrument that we haven't named yet. I guess we're just gonna have to wait until we play it some more, and then I think a name will become more obvious. With all of these, there's just a desire to try to think about new expressive dimensions that we haven't had in instruments thus far. We humans have been really, really good at exploiting just about every sound producing natural phenomenon, but not all of them. Like a lot of them are not easily accessible with technologies you know, before the last few decades. Like this, for instance. Okay, can you just give us a step-by-step -step breakdown of how everything is connected and working right now? You play the keyboard, the MIDI signals come out here into a big stack of software on the laptop. Out here into this sort of big circuit board that turns them into 32 different channels of on-off. It's like a big sound card. And then into this big ugly box full of cables where the little signals from the sound card turn into big signals to drive the electromagnets. When you turn the electromagnet on and off really quickly, it'll pull the string and let it go and pull it and let it go. And if you do it at just the right speed, you play that string at its fundamental where the whole thing moves like this. But if we drive it at twice that speed, it'll get two nodes, it'll go twice as fast. We can go three times, four times, it goes up through what they call the harmonic series. And it makes all these harmonics bloom on the string. It creates a big, big sound, really interesting with layers and layers and good stuff to listen to. Musically, it opens up the possibility of there being sort of this whole orchestra of sound within the harp of a piano. Pianos are like a beautifully evolved instrument in and of themselves, but it's nice to know that they're also full of all these extra sounds that don't usually get exploited in the process of playing a regular piano. Cool, it's nice to like feel how it resonates. It sounds like singing, you know, it sounds like a choir. It's very cool. 
When you were just describing the different harmonics that you can find through the magnets vibrating the string differently, this image came into my mind, like, how far can you push this? Like, how much can you, like, <laughs> mutilate this sound? And, like, is it just going to explode at some point? We'll find out. <laughs> well, actually, the answer is yes, it does kind of explode in different ways. We had some of that happening earlier today. It was a big setback. So, oh, no. <laughs> the electronics were, were, we were getting a bunch of stuff burning. But it is an instrument for duet. It's for two parts. One person is the tactile player, and they can hammer, tap, pick, strum, scrape all of these strings. Uh, and the other player plays it through a bunch of electromagnets that are mounted behind this wooden panel here. And then there is the opportunity for the tactile player and the magnetic player to interact. And I like that where they interact is this very, very tactile sense, the actual physical vibrations of the music and fingertips. You want to give it a try? I will try it, yeah. All right. I, yeah. I don't know how to play an oh. actual piano. Well, this is even better then. Okay, good. Okay. All right, cool. Is, is there any part of this that I shouldn't whack? No. Like, even this? Yep, go for I it. I can whack it. You can whack it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Piece. And now that I am exploring this whole contraption, I can feel it vibrating. The whole entire thing is vibrating from uh -huh. the magnets, mm -hmm. which is really cool. But I still don't understand how magnets work. <laughs> 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 it would be cool to have multiple people on this playing a percussive part and a bass part. And a oh yeah, absolutely. It's the thing I love about, you can get so many hands on this one instrument and they can all be making different sounds and different voices. The next frontier for this isn't so much a technical one, but sitting down and playing it and playing it and seeing what, what new can you say or what old can you say in a new way. There's a wonderful quote from Sun Ra. You know, nobody ever says, let's go see that band. They always play everything right. And so I think about that a lot when I work on these instruments. When I look back on all my instruments, I kind of love all the ones that I've made, and most of them feel like they, they're not 100% what I'm trying to achieve. So you're not fully satisfied yet? No, no. And if I never get satisfied, it's okay, because the road is fun. I think it's just human nature to always push the envelope in new creative ways. Coming up with interesting controllers, it's kind of a democratization because not everyone can afford a piano or a violin. We're always trying to bend the laws of physics. Experimentation is part of our jobs. Once you understand what is excellent sound, it's just a matter of engineering it. I think we have that covered.